Welcome back. You know, it was just pointed out to me during the commercial break that with this jacket on, I look like I might be participating in a fox hunt over the coming <laughs> long weekend. That being said, no one would confuse me with someone who might be capable of defending themselves from aggression. So tonight, we're going to have actually a serious conversation with an old pal and his lovely partner who are putting on a workshop that is going to be an important one for lots of you folks out there listening here in television land. It's the Women's Active Self-Protection Workshop, and the hosts are here, Master Jake Brosnan and Instructor Rhea Brosnan. Welcome, you guys. Nice Thank to you. see you. Nice to see you, too. It's nice to see you in your natural environment. It, you you know, water. <laughs> yeah, there's guards at the door, so I don't have to worry about anyone being aggressive toward me. There you go. Because of this jacket. So. There you go. Good. Good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's good to be here. I mean, this is, um, it's a serious subject matter, but we also, we want to, the training has to be fun. We have to enjoy what we're doing. No right? There's no, in, there's no longevity in it. So it's a very serious topic, but we have a good time doing it too. I used to say back in uh, the old days when I was slim and trim and a trainer that uh, the, the work we're doing is serious, but that doesn't mean we have to act serious. So right. Have exactly. a little bit of fun. And Rhea, nice to meet you. Welcome you to the show. Thank you. Uh, talk a little bit about about this serious work from a woman's standpoint. I mean, obviously, everyone needs to have some kind of skill set like this, but especially still in the year 2016 when women simply aren't given the respect that they deserve. This is an yes, important topic. it's just. Women themselves, we are smaller in stature, in weight a majority of the time. Anytime we're going to encounter violence, the people that we're going to encounter it with, they're usually going to be bigger, stronger, you know, and so working with that, what we train in is very important. And talk a little bit about kind of, it's a, it's a six hour workshop. This is a fairly yeah. intense period of time to be focusing on this stuff and mm -hmm. it makes sense to me from the standpoint of there's stuff to learn, mm -hmm. and there's some practicing to be done, I'm sure, especially when you have your instructors there with you during that time. Talk a little bit about kind of the, the arc of the narrative of a day doing this kind of a workshop. There, there's a lot of great women's self-defense programs out there. I know a lot of masters that do a lot of great work with that. Um, one of the areas that I noticed could maybe be emphasized a little bit more is learning how to read your environment. The, the term active self-protection was specifically chosen as opposed to women's self-defense because the act of being defensive would put you behind on timing. Aggression beats the defense because that person is setting the timing of the altercation. So if you're able to read your environment Environment. We call it the study of proxemics, heuristics, being able to set environmental baselines. You can pick up on threats before it's on top of you. So the big thing here is we're obviously going to be working on, on a lot of combative techniques as well, but you know, so nowadays it's so common people walk around looking at their phones and with earbuds in, and if you look at that from a predatory mindset, you couldn't be a better target. Yeah, it's, You're it's scary just to, just when you say that in, in the context of this conversation, you go, wow, man, that's that is so true. I mean, so many of us are. If you put yourself in that position, an aggressive, uh, they're out there hunting. If they want something from you, they're hunting. And if you're not paying attention to what's happening around you, you look and somebody's on top of you, and by the time that happens, you're in a reactive state, That's you're true. behind on timing. You know, there are things you can do, I'm not gonna say that there's not, but you're at a disadvantage. Whereas, especially when we're talking about, you know, women that maybe have a smaller stature, you want every possible advantage that you can get when it comes to violent altercations. And, and, and that timing, mm -hmm. that ability to sense your surroundings and see some sort of aggressor coming at you, right. I'm sure it can make the difference between Absolutely. A different outcomes, let's yes. put it that way. And a good example of that, I mean, even when we talk about establishing baselines, I mean, an easy one would be if you go into a, a crowded bar. You would expect certain environmental Sure. cues to be going on there. You would expect a more noisy, noisy environment. Now, if you're in there and all of a sudden things get quiet, the music shuts off, that would be a cue that this is an anomaly to the baseline. So that's something that you would want to pay attention to and start looking around to see what's happening. And I think just that, just that consciousness of be aware mm -hmm. when you're in public, you, for the most part, we tend to spend our time in environments that aren't dangerous, but it's just that kind of mindset that... Right. 
How this kind of came into existence, though, is I remember when we, we had a conversation a while ago where we you had mentioned to me, because I'm a six foot four guy. I'm 210 pounds. I'm six foot four. Um, what works for me is not going to work for a five foot three, five foot four <laughs> individual. It's not the same thing. Now, there's advantages for each one. I mean, a lot of the styles that we train in Truly. are, you know, like, for example, the Filipino martial arts. A lot of the masters that we train under are a little bit shorter in stature, and I would never cross any of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just, sure. they're, they're, they're very good at what they do. So there's definitely advantages but you have to learn how to use your body and work with what you're given um, one of the people that we've had the privilege to train with is Guru Dan Asanto who is um, kind of Bruce Lee's right hand man and carried on the Jeet wow. Kune Do system after uh, he passed on as well as Grand Tuhan Leo Gahe and just countless others I can't name them all but he always stresses everybody's body's different and so I can't blanket teach you one thing sure. that's going to work for everybody. So sure. as I was saying before, it works for me. It's not going to be the same for her. So we really want to specifically tailor things for all body types. Absolutely. Should we give a little a little bit of a uh, I don't know what the right a little a little, a little, a little preview demonstration, demonstration out sure, of that. Right. Um, one of the things when when you're talking about a violent altercation. So I, we're already past the point of. Our observation, right? Something, right, right. something. We, we've already been cued to a threat. The threat is approaching us. Maybe we're not able to get away, which would obviously be your first choice. If, if we're talking about self-protection, I would want to leave if I can. That's the safest Absolutely. thing to do. You know, abstinence is the safest form of con contraception. Same thing with fighting. Um, so what we want to do is. In the course of a day, even though we have six hours, I can't make somebody into a super assassin within the course of a day. Sure. There's countless styles of martial arts, and within each one of those styles, there are countless techniques for each individual technique. So let's say she throws a left hand punch. Well, maybe I train in a style where I know 50 different things to do off this straight punch. If she throws a right hand, I know you know 100 ways to go off of this. An average attack would take two to 300 milliseconds. You know, if I was surprised somebody comes in and punches, that's not enough time for me to process which hand she's attacking with, if it's a hook punch, if it's a straight punch, if it's an uppercut. So especially in the Filipino martial arts, they use something called the transferable methodology, which is one set of movement which can catch a whole lot of things. So you don't have right. to sit and process. Right. So for example, if she starts with just a left hand, I'm just going to program into my brain that I'm going to catch this with my right hand right away. All right, I'm going to go here. It's the same thing if she throws the right hand, this is also going to catch that punch. Okay? So now I'm going to add into it. We call this a sinawali, which means to weave. And this works with weapons. It works with empty hands. If you, it works with a pen. You have a pen in your pocket. You can use this. So what I'm going to do is she throws this punch. I'm going to catch it with the right hand. This left hand is going to follow to clear it out of the way. And this right hand is going to come in and strike. The purpose of that is I want to counterattack. I'm not defending. Because if she's in the aggressive mind frame, I want to disrupt her thought process as quickly as possible. So she's not thinking just follow, follow, Instead follow. Instead of just defend, defend, defend. Right, because they're coming up going, something back. I'm going to hit you, and all of a sudden they get hit, and their process has been disrupted. So she throws the left hand punch. I go here, boom. Let's say she doesn't want to get hit in the face. Let's go to the other side so that they can see. Let's switch. So she throws this one. Let's say she knows what she's doing. This is a little backwards, right? We're doing women's self-defense, and she's the one beating the crud out of me. <laughs> so she goes here, she goes here. And she doesn't want to get hit, so she comes in and she blocks that hand. Well, now I have the sensitivity. I know that I can move over, and I can go into joint locking and all these things from here. I can also present uh, weapons. Let's say she throws left hand and right hand. She goes to the punch. This one set of motion catches a wide variety of things, so I don't have to sit and I'm sorry, I'm throwing a show on my back of the camera. It's so okay. I don't have to sit and process. Real quick, I'm going to grab these also. Okay. Just so that you can see how this transfers over. These are very common weapons in the Filipino martial arts. This motion is basically just a weaving motion with the sticks. So if I had time, you know, if I have a student that's trained with me for a long time, I'd introduce them to this concept with double stick. We go to single stick, stick and knife, single knife, and then pretty much any weapon of opportunity you can get your hands on. It's a lot of stuff in the course of a day, but... Yeah, so this is just a... I mean, obviously, we're going to be covering a lot of things because there's tackles, there's ground fighting, there's all of this stuff. So we're going to be covering a lot of things. But the transferable methodology is going to be really important so we can get as much as we can into one day, and it's going to help you as much as it possibly can. Fantastic. And tell folks where they can find out more information and all the details. Okay, so uh, you can go to our website, tcablackbelt.com. You can buy tickets for the event on there. We have an early enrollment special. So if you in, if you buy tickets before the 24th, it's $80. After the 24th, it would be $100 uh, for the day. And uh, we're going to be having it at the Park City Mark on October 1st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Fantastic. Rhea, so nice to meet you. You too. Thank, thank you, you for so coming. Much, and uh, thank you for the work that you do on behalf of those who need 
education. Jake. Thank you, sir. It's always my pleasure. Man. It's good <laughs> to see you, brother. Good to see you, too. All right, you guys, quick break and more Super Bubble. Stay tuned, please.